Every year in the fall, we take a moment to review the activities of our parish. What activities, initiatives, events have we had in the past year? And we, we make an accounting of it. We give out an annual report. As you leave church today in the bulletin, you'll get a copy of the annual report. A chance for us to kind of take pride in what we're doing here. It's also a, an accounting of our finances to show how we're using our finances and trying to be uh, fiscally responsible. So we have this stewardship weekend each year. Consider our, our giving. There was a man praying in church and he was speaking to God and he was thinking about life on earth is short, heaven is eternal. He said, he asked God, what, what is a million years like? And God answered, to me, compared to eternity, a million years is like a second. The man thought hard for a moment, and then he asked, hmm, what about a million dollars, God? What's that like to you? God replied, to me, it's like a penny. The man paused, and then he asked, well, can I have a penny? God replied, sure, wait a second. <laughs> so pennies, millions, stewardship, right? How do we support our parish? This parish, St. Louis, has been doing great work for God, worshiping God uh, since 1855, 169 years. We had mass in the cemetery yesterday in the first church, that little chapel in the cemetery. And looking around at all the graves is kind of like the storybook of our parish. All these family names, people who've come and worshipped in the pews on Sunday morning as we're doing today for 169 years. So we start by thanking all of our parish for all the good work we're doing, our volunteering, our serving, our financial giving. God is doing great things through us. And we, re we review that today. First we consider why we give and then we consider how we give. Why do we give? We look at the scriptures for guidance today. In the gospel, a man approaches Jesus and he says, Jesus, what do I have to do to get to heaven? We all want to go to heaven. What's the most important commandment, right? And Jesus says, love God with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart. But also love your neighbor as yourself. Two commandments. This is the meaning of life. Love God and love others on earth, and then it will continue into eternity in heaven. It doesn't end. It's a continuity. If anyone asks you, what's the meaning of life? Please don't say, hmm, that's a deep question. I have to think about that. The meaning of life. Please say, love God and love others. It's not complicated, right? Simple. Love God and love others. What's the meaning of life? Okay, we got that. Like, you're good the <laughs> rest of your life. You know why you're here. Not complicated. Very difficult to do, but not complicated. Just keep trying. That's why we're here this morning. We're trying to love God, right? We're giving him our time and attention. Don't just think about God in your mind. Love him with your strength in action. Pray. Come to Mass. Go to confession. Daily prayers. Learn about God. Talk about God. Faith formation today. We're going to have little projects and we're going to look at the scripture, right? But love him with your heart too. Like try to want to do this. Try to have an interest and affection in him, right? And that, that's a life effort. Keep trying to love God. And the more we love God, the more we're going to love others, right? Love your neighbor in action. Talk to them. Help them. Be interested in them. Forgive them. Teach them. So not complicated, but challenging. Our parish exists to help us love God and love neighbor. We provide Sunday Mass so we can love God and receive his love, and that grace will motivate us for the next seven days to do a little better in loving our neighbor, a little more generous, a little more patient. What is the work we're doing here at St. Louis Parish? Right? Why do we give to this parish? How are we loving God and neighbor? There's nothing more important on earth than what we do here. We might, we might forget that. We get asked by a lot of organizations, right, for help. Our alma mater, your high school, wants your financial support. Your college 
Once you graduate, wants you to be giving. Many charitable organizations solicit us in the mail or in emails. They're all doing good work. But what's the most important work to support? We bring God to earth. Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago, but he continues to come to earth through Catholic parishes. At Mass today, on this altar, Jesus is going to come down to earth. Bread is going to change into God. And we're going to be blessed by that. So we bring his grace and holy communion. We bring his mercy and confession to the world. Receive God's mercy and forgiveness. We bring his teachings, his truth. He wants to answer our questions. What's the meaning of life? What's right and wrong? And we bring his love, his charity. This parish does a lot of outreach to those who are poor and suffering. So we consider that the world needs help. If you've been watching the news headlines, the world is broken. There's only one thing that can fix it, God. And that's what we do here. We bring God to earth. I just want to go through our annual report briefly, some of the highlights. You can take it home and read it. But how does that unfold here at St. Louis Parish, loving God and neighbor? First, we're worshiping our God. That's kind of the most obvious thing we do. It's what we're doing this morning. On any given weekend, we have 1,600 people sitting in the pews here. Along with St. Francis, our sister parish, 2,200 people a weekend. That's almost a town. We baptize babies at the beginning of life. We anoint our parishioners at the end of life as they're dying. I was anointing a parishioner at their home at 10.30 p.m. the other night. A privilege to be with them before they die. Give them one more sacrament. Last year, we baptized 131 babies starting their journey to heaven, worshiping our God. We raise our children. We're raising our children. A picture of our youth group. <clears throat> we have 570 students in St. Louis School, which has been teaching for 100 years. We have 200 children in our faith formation program, in our whole family faith formation, which we're starting this year. Right, we're teaching our children right and wrong. We're teaching them who is God, how to pray. We're teaching them the meaning of life. We're teaching them about marriage and family and sexuality, the proper understanding, giving them a chance for life. We have youth nights twice a month. We have over 70 teenagers dropping in on our youth nights. Last year, we had 112 teenagers who received confirmation, right? Teaching our children, preparing them to go out and love God and love neighbor, serve society. We're learning our faith together. This is a group of parishioners. 23 of our parishioners are training to be spiritual mentors to assist other parishioners live their Catholic lives. Last year, there was a Eucharistic revival around the United States. Here at our parish, we had 430 parishioners participating in some of the Eucharistic events. We have 112 parishioners participating in our ongoing weekly Bible studies. 170 adults attended our Acts retreats last year. Different ways that we're learning about Jesus, we're learning the Catholic religion, we're learning the meaning of life. Who are we as humans and who is God? Worshiping our God, raising our children, learning our faith, serving our neighbors. We're bringing the love of Jesus to others. Some of our teenagers go each month and serve the hungry in Baltimore City. Last year, our parishioners gave away $710,000. $710,000 to various charities and collections, right? Each of us individually can do a little. Together, we can do a lot. Last year, we collected 50,000 pounds of food in our bi-monthly food collection for local food pantries. We gave $18,000 to the local pregnancy centers and maternity homes. We prepared monthly dinners for the homeless at the grassroots shelter in Howard County. We make weekly visits to two nursing homes in our area. Just different ways we're trying to bring the love of Jesus, to encourage people. So serving our neighbors, and finally, we're building our friendships, right? We're doing all this together whether it's rosary tailgates or our annual Clarksville picnic, 146 Clarksville picnic last year, 1,300 of us sat down together and enjoyed fried chicken dinners. That's a lot of chicken, 1,300 dinners. We have 27 small groups meeting in their homes and in the parish each month. We have a robust Catholic daughters group and a Knights of Columbus group. We have kingdom builders groups for women, men of virtue for men. 
just different ways we're trying to get to know each other better, encourage each other, learn from each other, hold each other accountable. This is loving God and loving neighbor. So that's why we give, to support this work. We're part of that work. So how should we give? We know as Christians we're supposed to give away. We're supposed to share what we have with others. We all know that. The question is, how much should I give? Jesus, how much do I have to give to get into heaven? Right. How generous do I have to be? It's a fair question. Love your neighbor. Okay, how much? Well, there's a standard in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, there's an account of Abraham coming back with some of his soldiers from a battle. And they, they won the battle. And they meet this priest, Melchizedek. He's a Jewish priest. And he's praying for them. And it says Abraham gave him 10% of what they won in the battle. That becomes kind of the standard of giving. Give 10% of, of your income away. And if you do, you're going, it's going to pinch. That's, that's a significant amount. And that's the point. Give enough away that there's some things you want to do that you can't do because you gave some away to those who have less. Feel their pain a little bit. Now, if you don't have much, you give 10% of not much. If you have a lot, you give 10% of a lot. It's just a percentage. Priests have a low salary, which is fine because all our needs are provided for. We love it. But I tithe my salary to St. Louis and St. Francis. Yeah, as I said, 10% of not much is not much. But it's still 10%. When we're young, teenagers, we can start tithing, right? If you have any kind of income, give 10% to the poor. Young adults, let's start tithing. This is just what Christians do. We share what we have with others. Make it a habit. Don't agonize over it, right? It's just something we do. Get in the habit. And if you're tithing, you feel good about yourself because you know you're giving sacrificially. You know, if we give away 5% of what we have, maybe that's sacrificial, but maybe it's not. If you give away 10%, you know you're being generous. And always remember, when we give to the parish, you're not giving it away. You're giving to us. Like, you're part of us. You're just as much a part of this parish as anyone else is. You're not really giving your money away. You were pulling our money together and then doing great things with it. We all have a stake in the work of St. Louis. So this weekend is just a chance to recommit, right? How do we give? Look at our finances. In the annual report, it lists our income and expenses. The finance committee works very hard to be good stewards of the sacrifices our parishioners make. If you look on the annual report, we were in the black for our operating. Our income was higher than our expenses. We were in the black, $650,000 surplus. 600000 But there's a little note. We had $605,000 of extraordinary repairs. So we're actually in a deficit of $5,000. Remember, we had to repair the Howard Bishop roof. We had to repair the stone chapel. There was smoke damage. We had to replace two boilers. So the parish is big, right? We had $4.1 million in expenses last year. This is, we're one of the very biggest parishes in our diocese. We're doing a lot of good. But I'm going to make the point, we're not trying to merely cover costs. We're trying to push our mission forward. The more we have, the more we can do. There's no limit. There's a whole world to convert out there. Sometimes the staff gets a little overwhelmed. The work is never done. The world is increasingly confused, it's violent, it's vulgar, people are anxious. They need the message of Jesus and the, and the goodness of Jesus that we can bring to them. We want to make the world better for our children. There's a lot of work to be done. We can do a lot more. We want to do a lot more. We want to reach more people. So be part of the mission. Help us to advance the mission. We're going to try to simplify the giving. We know it's sometimes complicated in the church. We ask for different things throughout the year, different ways, second collections. So our finance committee, starting in January, is going to simplify the giving. Two months from now, we're going to drop our parish second collections, and we're going to have two accounts that we can give to the church and the mission, the missionary work. The missionary work will cover all the special needs, the Families in need, supporting food pantries, supporting homeless shelters, supporting pregnancy centers and maternity homes. All will come from that 
pot, we'll have a committee kind of designating, continuing to give to those collections, but from that pot, rather than asking every week or every other week. We'll still have our poor boxes, we'll still have our collection for Haiti, and we'll still have the diocesan annual appeal. We have a monthly maintenance collection, which many of you are, are generous to. The Finances Committee is concerned that we're going to lose that. So what we're just asking is whatever you give in the maintenance collection each month, just shift that giving, add that to what you give to the parish in our first collection. In the pew, there are these little commitment cards. Uh, we're not asking you to fill anything out. It's just information. But if every family could take one, if you could pass them down, one per family. If it's not in your pew, there's one right behind you at the end of the pews. Just take one and look at it. It's just got good information. You can take it home. Nothing to fill out. But we ask you to give consistently, whether you're giving by envelopes or online. Pick a percentage that you can give and then stick with it through the year. That consistent sacrificial giving. Secondly, we encourage you to sign up for online giving. About 70% of our parishioners give online now. If you're not currently giving online, we encourage you to sign up. It helps us to budget because we get that consistent giving coming in. If you want to sign up for online giving, you can use the QR code. Just connect with your phone, take you right to our giving page, or you can just go to the parish website. On the home page, there's a link for online giving. The Finance Committee asks if you, if you do sign up for online giving, there's a little box you can click to pay the credit card fee each time we give a gift, whether you're giving weekly or monthly. Um, the committee appreciates if you click off that box and include that fee in your gift. If you're already giving online, thank you, but maybe reconsider your gift. Maybe you signed up five years ago and you haven't looked at the level of giving. Maybe your circumstances have changed. And so as a family, you can look at that and maybe take a step forward. Maybe if you're not giving 10%, maybe you can take a step closer to that. And again, you can use the QR code to reconnect with your online giving uh, account and, and take a step forward. If you can look on the back of the card, there's a little chart. I just want to pull out a couple points. In the top left corner on that chart on the bottom, top left of the chart, it says if your weekly income is $400 a week, which would be about $21,000 a year, 10% tithe of $400 a week would be $40 a week, would be a gift. Maybe we can't give 10%, but that's kind of a, a, a standard to look at. On the bottom left of that chart, if you have $3,000 income a week, that's about $156,000 a year. 10% of that would be $300 a week would be the tithe. So just some ways to kind of get our mind around these numbers. Someone said, well, I send my children to St. Louis school, so I'm paying tuition to the parish. Can I deduct that? Well, maybe if you have an annual income, deduct that tuition, and then whatever remains, tithe that amount. We're going to have these two accounts, church and mission. How much should I give the church? How much should I give the mission starting in January? Well, maybe whatever you give to the church, tithe that amount to the mission. So if you're giving 10%, maybe give 9% to the church and 1% to the mission account. Just some ways to, to do this. We're trying to simplify it. Also on the back, there's some information about giving through stocks or IRA. Some of our parishioners do that. You can contact our parish office and we'll, we'll help you do that. It's very generous. And if you could just look as a family, talk together, pray about it this week, and recommit to supporting the work of this parish, and adjust your level of giving. Maybe just do it this week. Make that a goal by next Sunday. And in the next two months, we'll be discussing how we're going to simplify the giving starting in January. So my brothers and sisters, let's not rely on God to change pennies into millions. Keep giving. It's just what Catholics do. Not merely to cover expenses, but to advance the mission, to push the mission forward, to reach more people, to love our neighbors, to serve them, to bring them God. It's the mission of St. Louis Parish. It's the mission of the Catholic Church. It's the mission of Jesus Christ. Amen.